you know we have met uh, you know the, on our class and then of course i've explained you you know all the details okay so before uh, you know the course is as follows okay so before we go into the mathematical things the geological geomorphological features and other things so the first thing is you know one should know about our uh, solar system like inventory you know that's what you were discovering uh, what we were discussing okay like what are the planets are there in our solar system what are the important uh, you know observations has been made and then you know so where we can uh, you know what are the, our neighbors and all other things you know we were discussing okay so that was our thing so today also we will continue our uh, discussion okay so first of all let us close this inventory things then we will go into our uh, more mathematical and other things also okay so now before uh, i go into details i just wanted to tell you see this course i think you know i have not told you about uh, the evaluation process okay so like how i will be evaluating all of you so basically you know my target is uh, you know see what is a broad objective you know of our course say the planetary geology that's what our title so what i want all of you is uh, you know see like for example say if i want to send uh, you know a space craft or a lander say on moon or mars or venus or whatever you know so how do we select a landing site basically okay that is the most important question you know before any mission starts say so like uh, of course the flyby is different but if they want to land some uh, you know this uh, rovers or something like that how do we select a landing site okay so that is the main objective right now you know everybody is uh, you know discussing because one land if you want to land a rover say okay with all the instruments or whatever you want like seismic instruments or some electromagnetic radio and all kinds of things okay so the most important thing for them is the how to select the landing site that is the most important thing now how do we select a landing site now so like for example if you are selling a selling a drilling machine say to mars or moon or some other uh, this one and then let us say the landing site you have uh, located you know on a rock type site so then what will happen you know so you can't drill a rock you know the soil things may be easy you follow so more uh, you know these kinds of issues will be there and then when you are selling and sending billion dollar uh, equipments there say you also should be able to you know the uh, map the preliminary geology like you know you should be able to collect more amounts of data and something like that so what all of you have to do is uh, you know you uh, the evaluation say so like in the as far as this course is concerned all of you you know you can please go to this uh, website okay so if you go to this uh, jgr uh, planets okay so you have to uh, so i will just share you the screen okay so you can see the screen no you are able to see the screen right yes sir no so what all of you have to do is you go to this and you are able to see right this journal website jgr planets you can see right this jgr planets yes sir so now what all of you have to do this is a you know a very uh, most you can say the popular journal actually in terms of planets a journal of geophysical research in planets so it has lot of an articles actually okay so they will give you you know so like for example uh, you know so like if you can see this a paper so the mostly many of the papers are open access you can download also so what your objective what i am looking for is so like for example the mars and moon and venus is a, we know all the topographical data you know the remote sensing images all those images are already available basically okay so what all of you have to do is you have to uh, you know do the initial geological uh, things basically like for example if i land at a particular site say what are the interesting geological features basically okay whether there are any faults whether there are any you know like uh, some type of peculiar things actually boulder falls or landslides or you know the dust storms or whatever so this you should be able to map from the uh, you know this uh, geo uh, this type of maps basically the remote sensing and others okay so that is going to be your evaluation okay slowly once you go so all of you can start reading this uh, journal also jgr you know so like as you can see there are lot of uh, very interesting papers are there so like for example the first paper say so that fellow has discussed about uh, cerebrus fossae you know it is located on uh, mars basically okay and they have discussed like you know some geological things and then you know something like that so there are lot of interesting uh, papers are there so you can see all these uh, you know some of the papers also how do they locate a landing site and then how do they come up with you know all the geological uh, map uh, features is from this uh, maps itself okay 
so now uh, i hope all of you have uh, uh, see this uh, minakshi now i think the arcgis software we have right one free software qgis so, is free uh, software qgis is free okay so all of you you can download this uh, qgis software okay so now Uh, if you want to know about the topographical maps of the moon and mars they are available from uh, nasa website itself okay so you can download these uh, photographs images also so you people can explore these maps and then you try to identify some uh, geological features you know from this uh, websites okay so now as far as this course is concerned say whoever uh, you know so you are supposed to select some arbitrary site and whatever i will be discussing so after some time in the course you know you should be able to identify the all the geological features like you know the boulder falls the size of the boulders the landslide sizes you know all those things you should identify from these images and then you should be able to prepare a nice uh, report kind of thing okay so that is going to be our uh, evaluation process whoever does it rigorously and he applies and then he gives all the information to say so then that you follow right you will be giving uh, grades as per uh, that only and that is the main objective of this course also so the main objective also what i am expecting is you should be able to identify the landing sites the geological pros and cons you should be able to write all those uh, important uh, details from this remote sensing uh, maps there are i think gravity maps may be there you know uh, for moon and uh, mars i think extensive data sets are there see so meenakshi where is this all these data sets sir digital elevation models are available for moon in uh, lroc lola website oh, if you LROC. type lroc hmm. no, no what you do is you please send uh, send them the links okay in the whatsapp group you please post uh, all these uh, links also in, so, uh, so instead of you can get all the no, instead of i writing uh, this one you know yes, i want you people you only you explore and then you should download and maybe apart from that website there may be some other interesting also high rise images you know that websites are the arizona university so all of you <coughs> so you please download these data sets and then uh, you know you can start working uh, you know by this maybe this week you start looking at those websites qgis that software also you download and that software will help you to uh, you know to calculate distance between you know the two points the sizes of the boulders and other details you know you can get from that uh, Uh, you know that uh, software itself okay so fine so this is what the evaluation so now let us go to our uh, slides okay uh, so now you can see the slides right now so we, you are able to be, see no no yes no uh, yes so now uh, you know so last uh, class is said okay so we have already discussed about uh, you know these are the planets essentially so we have started discussing you know all the great uh, details itself so as already i told you in our solar system say okay so the most important thing you know we are looking like we are having all the planets and other things also but what we said all these planets can be classified into how many groups yeah. how many groups you can classify them yeah. three uh, they are basically hmm. terrestrial ice giants and gas yeah. giants so there three groups you can classify okay so now you will find out terrestrial planets very close to the sun as you go far away gas giants and as you go much more far away say so obviously you will see these type of icy giants kind of thing itself okay and then we have also said most of the mass in our solar system 99.8 is harried by the sun itself but the planets are significant you know when you try to find out this angular momentum and other things also so i have shown you lot of uh, you know the interesting uh, photographs is of mercury you know the impact craters i have shown you know meteoric impacts is there so they are so happened you know in all the planets and then you see so these nice uh, pictures i have shown you mercury we have seen then you know the magnetic field and then you know what are the venus also i have shown you so now uh, venus also has very high temperature say compared to mercury it is the most hottest planet because of you know this uh, carbon dioxide and sulfuric acids the cloud layers are there 
and of course you know so the it also contains a lot of basaltic plains uh, you know so these type of volcanic uh, things in the soil and others i have already we discussed in our uh, last class okay so this is about venus then earth of course i have shown you and of course we will be discussing this in great uh, detail also so now when it comes to mars is so mars is also very well understood uh, planet basically in our uh, solar system apart from other uh, you know things itself so now this is a comparison between earth the moon and the mars their sizes are something like that and of course this mars is as already i told you from long back itself so people have started putting telescopes and then identifying you see the regions in this uh, you know the mars itself and then somebody i think green or somebody told that you know there is some ice is also available at the poles you know of the mars also so now this was a mariner 4 which gave the first image of mars and then uh, you know the mars day you follow that these are the atmosphere the compositions okay like uh, earth has oxygen is at 0.21 but whereas uh, you know in mars is it is very very little oxygen is there okay so this is uh, this one and then mars also shows a lot of uh, basins you know like similar to our earth so like lake basins uh, you know mountains and all other things you can see in uh, mars images also like pedestrian craters you know Uh, fluid is ejected they say like some time you know the crater was formed by some heating you know meteorite heating this uh, the surface of the mars and then you know so these are beautiful craters they say you can identify in uh, from this uh, images itself okay then the valley network also i showed you okay like even if this is similar to our earth like if you see a ganga river or any river say it will have nice tributaries and other things so in mars also so you will see these type of uh, you know the river channels river networks also from this uh, you know the images mm -hmm. so now like similarly you know when rain occurs you know glacial lakes uh, kind of networks you can see but you can't see any water mm -hmm. but these all these uh, geomorphological features say they are available on uh, mars also okay and then huge deltas actually okay so this also one can see from the photographic uh, images itself and then there are some studies are there like if you see that jgr planets journal you know so somebody has even published like they said that there was a ocean you know which was there on the mars and then they say that these are all the ocean shore lines basically okay so they like it is they say it is like a geomorphological feature you know on the mars it's similar to our earth also but of course now there is no water where that water has gone whether it has gone inside the mars or it has gone into the space we don't know right now the situation what was the reason for that but these are all these geomorphological features similar to our earth is same to same you can see on mars planet itself and then you can also see this type of glacial formation so if you see this geomorphological features say so you can see it is exactly similar to the size and other things you know but there is no you can see same type of features say, are on uh, mars also okay then we have ice is there on the north pole of the mars like it is maybe carbon dioxide and water you know in ice form is already available this uh, you know you can viking and many missions say they have discovered this uh, on uh, mars itself okay and then you can see these type of gullies you know uh, all coves channel sections fan you know all these uh, geomorphological features we say so they are available on uh, mars and then you know right mars we have even the rovers have gone this curiosity rover you can see so you can the, all these features you can so you can see this is the mars and this is earth basically it is a, basically a lake bed okay so you can see most of them you know the pebbles and all these features the geomorphological features exactly same to same as earth you can find in uh, mars also now these are sedimentary rocks are there you know uh, these type of rocks also you can find it on mars and then the sand dunes is there so like you know desert you know the sand dunes also you can find out in mars the dust storms you know so same and all the kind of geomorphological features is there similar to earth you can find out in uh, mars planet also dust you know so many images are there okay i'm showing you some uh, images but if you can go to that high rise website or other websites where you can get excellent uh, you know uh, photographs you know of this uh, mars uh, surface of the mars then there is also proof for this volcanism you know, there was an active volcanoes are there you know this bulge kind of thing and then this olympus moons say, which is uh, almost i think the tallest uh, you know the mountain in the entire solar system i think some 27 kilometers height or whatever it is the height of this mountain so it's a huge mountain which has been formed by this volcanic activity so this geomorphological feature is there which is a very dominant feature at basically on mars also then another thing the most important geomorphological feature okay so when you are going for to mars itself 
the spacecraft from the surface or even from a telescope also you can see is this future that is what we call as you know the valles mariners uh, region oh, so this is basically you know it's a huge grand canyon you can say 4500 km is the length of this uh, you know the grand canyon from this side to this side so it is visible from the uh, space itself now this valles mariners uh, region say like you know we have also worked on this area and we have published a paper you know in the one earth planetary science journal where all the geomorphological features like you see what are the faults in this region what are the boulder falls you know all those things you know we have documented okay so i am also expecting all of you to select some sites basically okay some different site which we have not reported in the papers and then you try to map all the geological and geomorphological features at our site as uh, you know then it will be very nice actually okay so this uh, you know so you can see more or less uh, faults you know the normal faults whatever you see say so similar things you know you can identify easily from our uh, this uh, topographic you know the images itself so then you can see this type of uh, you know these are what we call as you know, the fault scarp you can see here so you know this is, this is basically what we call as a fault scarp so this is going down and this is coming up you know you can see these type of features so you can see this is a section we are showing here and these are all the faults which are located on this uh, you know the fault scarps so all these features you can see on uh, it from the topographic maps you can easily identify also so these type of uh, features and then you can also see the avalanches you know the boulders you can see here also the shadow this also you can identify and here what happens is you know these uh, images say so because the mars orbiter you know it will be rotating around this mars so they will be sending uh, you know all the images will be there like uh, maybe you know every one month or whatever they send the images so you can see these images say in one month whether there has been any you know change in the uh, occurred at that place also this also you can identify and there are a lot of uh, you know avalanches dust clouds everything you know it is available these uh, images also you can easily get you know from that high rise uh, data itself and then you can see this is what i was trying to tell you the boulder trials uh, things are visible here the boulders so all of you can see these small small uh, it looks like a pebble but these are all the boulders actually you can see the sizes of the boulder is almost you know 10 meter size huge boulders are there so you can see a lot of uh, boulder trials basically so like previously this boulder was located somewhere here so now due to some uh, geological things is said maybe it may be a mars quake or it may be a dust storm or it may be a landslide or whatever it may be so this boulder you know it has traveled from this place to this place actually so this is what we call as a you know, geomorphological feature so these things you know to identify you know the sizes of the boulder and then how much distance this boulder has traveled say so these informations you can get from that qgis uh, software so these images are the high resolution images you open in that uh, software say and then you zoom it and then you have to look very very carefully all these images and you have to identify all these features that is whether there are any fault scarps like you know this type of figures uh, you know the fault scarps we say so this type of things you should be able to identify and then you should be able to identify whether there are any landslides have occurred you know in the past like uh, you know the old images versus the new images and then the boulder tracks you say like when this boulder track was formed you know recently or whether they have been old and then you can easily find out the you know the geological scales also are there we will be discussing after you know some uh, classes so these things you should be able to identify here so now how do we so now how do so which is the best landing site actually if you want to send a probe say yeah. so what type of sites you look for See what type of site you know like for example whole mars is not a place right it is a huge region basically so how do you select the landing sites yeah. so like uh, once you know all the geological features you say so how do we select which site we will uh, you know go for plain site where somewhere uh, where there is no geological activity so you want to go to a site where there is no geological activity say then what are you doing there what what data you will get from that place like we can send out some rovers right nearby sites no no nearby what is nearby see mars is not a small town or a city you understand and you cannot send rovers for kilometers kilometers it is not possible okay so which site you will select uh, somewhere uh, there is some geological activity like this uh, boulder trials or something yeah so uh, where which the place where it is very active say see suppose if you are sending a seismic instrument or something say 
so that you should select a place uh, if you are sending seismic instrument where you will land your rover suppose i am sending a seismograph to mars say where which location you will see where this fault uh, scopes location? and all uh... no so if there is a fault like this for example okay so why if you sell if you put an instrument very close to this fault scar the advantage is definitely there will be a quake okay so once a quake occurs you can record it from the instrument and you can get that data you found it so suppose if you locate a site to say where it is not no geological activity is happening no boulder trials no fault scarps there is nothing is there say then uh, you want to land there so there is no with that the region is showing no more any activity say so now and if you are spending billion dollars or whatever you know it is waste actually okay so now so what we want is you know we want to find out the landing sites where there are lot of geological activity suppose if you have a rover or whatever you have you should be able to select this a lot of images where you will get more information basically more data you should be able to collect lot of amount of data suppose as i told it if you want to drilling drilling equipment if you want to sell it, send it there say you should select you know what type of rock sites uh, you know suppose if it is a hard rock then you will not be able to drill it so all these are basically the issues actually apart from that they will use this solar power or whatever so there should be you have to select a site where you know the sun uh, you know you can say you know that charging and other things also you know very a lot of issues are there but anyway but as far as the landing site is concerned we have to send a rover to a place where there is a lot of geological activity okay so geological and geomorphological activities you may have to send to a place where there is a river network are there say like i showed you right in mars so then you will get some information basically the river network say you know the you can understand our boulder trials you know so seismic activity and whatever whatever these things are there say so that is a site you know you have to select so this is going to be the main objective of this uh, course okay so all of you uh, you take mars moon and uh, you know venus also the data sets are available you have to identify the best landing sites okay and you should be able to geologically map an area and you should get all this information okay so i will be tv will be discussing you how to identify these features also from the remote sensing images so that is your uh, final you know evaluation or whatever you know that you should be able to do okay Uh, so now this is also a typical uh, picture so this was also a rover with the mars pathfinder say it landed on a you know uh, there was supposed to be a lake or something like that this that so you can say, identify you know how does it looks like this figure now see it where it looks now so what type of site it is can anybody identify So if you look at the figure say what is your comment what is your uh, what the what it tells you about the geological thing here see where do you see not these type of things hmm. all of these things were moved from one place to another place and got uh, stayed there no that is fine all the places so basically where do you see these type of things below it is there it is basically a flooded region actually once upon a time you followed so once upon a time there was maybe a floods or whatever was there but you don't know where that water is but you can see so now you should be able to identify basically okay so once you look at the image say you should be geologically you should be able to tell whether it was a site uh, you know the flow, water flowed here or whether it is a boulder activity sand storm or something like that so all these geological uh, features you, know, you should be able to identify from this uh, you know the max itself now what is the advantage of this rover if you send a rover to here say okay maybe you can find out water where the water has you know gone in this region say once upon a time it was a you know a flooded place say so you should be able to identify you know where the water was whether it is at located at a depth or you know you can identify when flood was there the you know the age of these rocks or whatever the weathering and all those things you can observe if you send a rover to these type of uh, places so this is what we call as uh, geological and geomorphological features okay so now so anyway these are some of the you know the moons actually for the mars you know phobos is a very famous uh, you know the moon of mars itself and i think deimos or something is there okay and some more small small uh, moons may be there you know around this mars but these are the most uh, huge uh, moons for there okay 
so this also i think our isro also sent uh, you know our uh, mars uh, that mission was there so that also has taken a lot of uh, images actually of these uh, two moons you know so all those mountains and valleys you can find out on this uh, small uh, moons also okay so this so, so now uh, so now what happens so this is basically the inventory i am just showing you so now uh, so this is a distance from sun so earth is taken as one as already i told you the units are in terms of au astronomical that units i have already told you so one au means you know the distance from center of the earth to the center of the sun itself okay so here if we see so there are the terrestrial planets and these are the jovian planets and these two jupiter and saturn say we call them gas giants and these two are uh, ice giants basically okay now apart from the, these two so now what happens is you know the region between mars and uh, you know this is jupiter so it is a very very you know the interesting uh, region so what do you find in this region from mars to jupiter in this re region yeah. so here earth is there mars is here and this is a jupiter basically so between mars and jupiter say uh, what do we have asteroids yeah. so this contains lot of asteroids actually okay so nowadays there is a lot of interest is there on asteroids why what is the reason so you would have seen in the news and uh, you know even nasa or many interim you know the whatever you can say many countries is say they are interested only in the asteroids basically nowadays why the you know any reason what is the speciality they are rich in minerals huh? so they are rich in minerals so yeah, they are very rich in minerals actually See the reason what happens is the gold or whatever say these metals you know the metals have very high density basically see gold has very high density is there these type of metals iron gold and other metals so what happens you know if we see our earth planets where do you see these uh, metals no. these high density say metals which have very high density what happens is these type of uh, you know the metals say, which are very very heavy in the solar system where do you find these metals basically rocky kind of a thing or high dense objects say where do you find in our solar system like if you see this figure say uh, what are terrestrial planets the so terrestrial planets are made up of no yeah. rocks hmm. so terrestrial planets are made up of rocks and then metals and other things will be there okay now uh, when you, because when because these terrestrial planets are very very close to sun okay so what happens is uh, these gases and other things you know they escape basically so all these things they get condensated in this jovial planets kind of a thing and then of course in the icy this one so now when you nearby and uh, on this terrestrial planets all these important uh, metals you know uh, gold or whatever very high density metals so what happens is in our earth say where do you see all these uh, metals basically na uh, iron where it is located on earth high density you know the iron and other things are very high this one so because these metals are very heavy say what happens no. so if you see any planet say okay there is a heavy high density or heavy metals are there what happens where it will be located in the core the crust no we didn't make it no it did just get sink actually because it is a very high weight right it just sinks inside the planet so what happens in our earth mars or other planets you will see these high metals or whatever these uh, you know you will see inside basically so they would have sunk inside the planet itself but now these asteroids what happens is these asteroids are all metals only you followed so we will see in the after some time so what happens is these asteroid belt say so now what happens is these asteroid belts what happens is one after another they have to collide with one another and the planet has to form but that planet has not formed actually so these are all the metal pieces which were there you know during the solar system which are unable to form as a planet as a one planet or something like that so these asteroids are very very rich in uh, you know the metals so there are some asteroids you know which are made up of gold you followed it very you know very excellent uh, quality of iron so many things are there so that's why you see nowadays uh, previously asteroid means people used to get afraid actually okay so they may hit or some but nowadays it has become a good business you know if you can mine one asteroid say so you can be very terribly rich uh, you know this iron and then uh, you know gold or other uh, 
very very rare uh, metals are you know they are available on these uh, asteroids okay so you now many asteroids have been taken photographs and several uh, you know i think missions have gone you know nasa and other missions even japanese missions went they have uh, you know blasted asteroid and then collected material and take took back to earth also so these are some of the famous asteroids okay tokowa it was done by this uh, jaxa japanese uh, space agency then yeda matilda so many names they have uh, given also eros and other things also so this is one famous asteroid in you know, a series almost its size is 473 km it's a huge uh, asteroid you know which is extremely rich in all the metals and you know all kinds of uh, very good uh, metals are there and this is also one more you know vesta this is also a huge uh, asteroid which is very rich in iron and the other uh, you know metals also okay so now uh, what happened was so now this is about the asteroids so now when you go far away say from this uh, asteroids you know uh, then you will see lot of other uh, you know uh, um, you know the objects also so now to see these very far away objects so this was what uh, you know this voyager 1 and 2 missions which was launched long back okay so these missions you know they were, they were they showed us the photographs of all these the far away planets and then far away objects in our uh, solar system also so now these uh, satellites uh, you know so now we have discussed about the planets uh, terrestrial then uh, you know this gas giants and icy giants also then we have lot of satellites also okay so this also lot of interesting things have come so you know the terrestrial planets there are seven uh, major moons basically okay of the giant planets not two planet jupiter's uh, satellites are there ganymede i showed you last class also uh, many interesting uh, uh, satellites for all these planets also have been uh, found out actually like for example titan say uh, saturn moon is denser than that of our that has been found out triton say uh, this is the largest moon of neptune you know which has an atmosphere and so these moons also have a very good atmosphere and then uh, you know they have all this water and all other kinds of things itself and it has winds powerful enough to strongly you know ejected from geysers also so triton it has been found out and many planetary satellites uh, atmospheres have been uh, detected also and now uh, jupiter io saturn enceladus i showed you last class also many satellites and then apart from these the planets is a lot of uh, satellites have been observed in uh, cooper belt objects and other things also you know a lot of information came up and then these are the rings also has been found out you know like this is the jupiter rings saturn then uranus and then neptune say they all show these type of uh, ring kind of structures okay so now uh, so most of the moons say they have been discussed uh, you know they have been discovered and of course earth moon has you know we have sent missions also man which missions also on moon itself so many planets say all their moons you know the uh, voyager 1 or 2 or whatever say they have gone and nice uh, photographs you know which contains the geological and geomorphological details they are uh, available basically okay so now uh, these are some of the you know the satellites of this is a moon okay which is a satellite for earth then these are some jupiter moons i showed you last class also images now we have a excellent uh, you know high resolution images are there now saturn also you know enceladus tethys the titan you know these are the biggest uh, moon for saturn the uranus also some moons have been discovered the neptune you know uh, many moons have been discovered also now this is for our uh, moon okay which you are seeing you know, every day evening and right, our uh, satellite so these are some details you will be looking these details into great detail after some point of time so you know this is the mass of the moon and when you compare to earth say how much it is percentage can you see here see so, me is the mass of earth basically so if i compare uh, you know the moon and earth say so how much mass it is uh, almost how much it is basically see how much it is 0.01 times you know of the mass of earth that is our the mass of the moon okay the radius is also you know 0.27 times say when you compare with this uh, earth itself so these are the densities and all other the details you know of our uh, moon itself and now this is uh, you know what type of coordinate system this is like yesterday i told you right yeah. so earth is at the center and if you observe this moon and sun so this is their orbits basically yeah. what type of coordinate system it is geocentric geocentric uh, coordinate system uh, so this is what what do you call this sphere this big one now uh, what do you call this sphere basically yesterday i told you right? we call this as 
celestial sphere celestial sphere okay so generally as already i told you this type of coordinate system was followed now also people are following we are not interested in the you know distances we are just interested in their movements only okay so this is the moon's orbit basically and this is the sun's orbit okay so there is something the sun's orbit is generally known as ecliptic we say so moon's orbit and sun's orbit say there is something like you know 5 degree you know there is some inclination is there the moon's orbit is 5 degrees inclined to this uh, sun's orbit so now you can see right because of this path this one say there are two nodes are there you can see this point descending node and then the ascending node actually so two points are there where these orbits coincide with each other but that uh, coincide with each other they will not collapse actually okay because the moon distance is different sun's distance is different but when you see in a, this type of a geocentric uh, coordinate system say because distances are not there so it appears as the both of them have uh, collided or something like that in the celestial this uh, type of coordinate system so what are these nodes known as uh, descending node and ascending node what happens when the two orbits coincide say what happens sir? now what are these two nodes hmm. ascending node descending node what happens when moon's orbit and sun's orbit uh, you know in the celestial this type of coordinate system so when they join so what happens no. eclipse no they are nothing but eclipses only okay so now in our uh, sanskrit say what is these nodes are known as ascending node is known as what what name we have given in our sanskrit descending node in our hindu you know these calendars eclipse only but what do we call eclipse solar and lunar eclipse no that is fine but in our sanskrit i am asking you okay so generally in sanskrit what do they say rahu and ketu have you heard it right you have yes, heard sir. rahu and ketu yes, so what is rahu no, ascending node is rahu descending node may be ketu actually you followed so that is how you know our navagrahas or whatever these things happens okay in the celestial uh, these coordinate systems also so they are nothing but uh, you know it keeps ascending node and descending node you know when you look at it in a celestial sphere but in reality their orbits are not say okay the distances are entirely different but if you plot it in a geocentric coordinate system so this is uh, these type of things uh, happen so okay so this you should keep it in mind and now this is a far side of the moon basically so when you look at uh, moon say when you look at into the sky you always because of the tidal locking or whatever you only see this uh, you know this is near side of the moon they say the moon which we are seeing in the sky that is what we call as a near side so these are some of the places okay so most of you would have seen right in the sky so now you should be able to know these in the names actually so mer imbrium mer serentiatis mer tranquillitis you know some names have been given so this is oceanus you know prosellarium you know copernicus this is a copernicus crater we say so this is how the moon looks like actually and lot of our apollo landing sites say apollo 12 14 16 11 of course some of them have failed but all these landing sites say they are located on uh, near side of the uh, moon itself because you know the communication becomes very easy actually okay and then these l l24 these are the soviet uh, sites where a spacecraft went and then collected back the uh, material itself but these places you know astronauts have gone and then they have done lot of testing i think some 300 kg of moon rocks have been brought up and they have done uh, you know this uh, Uh, MSW test and all those things at this uh, place itself so this is how the near side of the moon looks like basically okay and this is how the far side of the moon so this side of the moon you can never see with our naked eyes in the sky but uh, the spacecraft which they have gone uh, that side of the moon also so this is how you know the far side uh, looks like actually so what is your observation here uh, how does that look like uh, what are what, how does it looks like basically Uh, from a geological point of view say what do you call this one full of craters lot of craters lot of craters so these are all meteorite impacts basically okay so so much of uh, you know craters you can see on the uh, moon itself so these are all you know the lava flows they say okay so these are the places you know once upon a time maybe due to a crater or maybe due to impact or something so lava flows basically these are all the black uh, regions also okay so this is how the moon looks like and these are some of the uh, you know very famous uh, basins on moon actual large impact basin so this was what we call as a basin okay so this site actual so this tells you the diameter of the basin or whatever so there are huge basins are there 
one is oceanus procellarium so this is a basin okay oceanus procellarium say so this is a huge basin on moon you can see and its uh, size is a diameter is a 3200 uh, kilometers so it's a huge basin then mare imbrium is there so where is that mare imbrium so you can see here mare imbrium this is also a huge uh, basin basically okay which was created by impact or you know this lava flows or something like that and its a size is you know 1500 uh, kilometer now mare crisium is there then oriental basin is there its size is 930 kilometers is the diameter so okay mare tranquillitas nubium present it so many craters are there and there are very interesting uh, craters are there okay so like here you see copernicus uh, crater is there small small you know huge number of craters you can see on the uh, moon also okay so here also Uh, like you see you should be able to identify high resolution images are there okay meenakshi will send you the link today you now you what is your job your job is to identify the best landing site actually so now uh, like now you are seeing right mare imbrium oceanus procellarium uh, himerium nectar so many things are there now you should be identify which is the best landing site suppose if i land our spacecraft or a manned mission or whatever at mare serenity i tell you say what is that he can find out actually what extra information you will get and then we can do some kind of you know a you know priority basis actually which is the best site you know where you will be able to extract more amount of information so like that you know we should be able to identify the uh, sites also now uh, any spacecraft has gone to the landed on the far side of the moon uh, which country has gone to far side of the moon say Uh, nasa uh, us no spacecraft has gone actually has landed i'm talking about the landing on uh, you know the far side of the moon uh, which country has put up any idea on the far side of china. the moon huh? china no uh, recently china that paper is also published okay in science journal so this is china has landed on the far side of the moon you know and they have found out lot of glass uh, i think you know Molten glass or glass, something you follow, right? That they have been reported also in that uh, science journal. They have published also on the far side of the moon. So, what's the problem landing on far side of the moon? No. So, any of you, you are all engineers, right? So, what's the advantage? Near side is easy or far side is easy? <laughs> no, like from yeah. engineering point of view, say, what is the main disadvantage? So, maybe communication gap. Hmm. excellent because far side you can't see right so communication you can't do from far side so what happens is you also should have an orbiter actually some satellite for uh, moon itself so once your data is there so the data has to be transmitted to the satellite you know some small orbiter around the moon and that will transmit the data to the earth itself suppose if we are on the near side of the moon say then there is no satellite required direct because from earth and moon there is nothing in between right it is only this solar wind will be there so automatically the data transfer becomes very easy actually that's why people go to the near side of the moon far side is a very you know, a difficult kind of thing because from communication point of view nothing else okay and now how moon was uh, formed say so there are lot of uh, hypotheses actually i don't know how many of you heard uh, so many hypotheses has come but now uh, you know people have done numerical simulations also okay so like this was a thing so they say that earth you know when it was formed long back it was spinning very fast actually so when things becomes very very fast say so some portion of earth you know uh, it just broke away from our earth and then you know this moon has uh, formed like this okay so that is what one theory you know fission theory they say so this theory was proposed long back but then there are some pluses and minuses pros and cons for all this uh, theories itself okay so this was one theory then there is also one more theory capture like moon is also you know something like a comet or an asteroid you know from somewhere else so it came uh, closely towards our earth so our earth because of gravitational pull say we just captured moon and then you know this a tidal locking happened and then it started rotating around our earth also capturing kind of okay so this is some object some asteroid or something in asteroid belt or maybe somewhere else so due to gravitational pulls earth has attracted this moon so this was one theory that's what they call as a capture theory also then the another theory was during the planet formation times so earth was there around earth also like that asteroid belt is there right so there were so many asteroids or some small small particles was there what they call as a debris and then what happened because they are all moving say so they you know bombarded each other actually and then finally you know this moon has uh, formed basically so there are theories are like a fission theory capture theory and an accretion theory 
then now uh, all these three theories say there are each theory has its own pros and cons basically okay so many they have done lot of simulations analysis and others now there is one more theory which is very accepted and now it has been published also like the giant uh, impact hypothesis they say that you know earth uh, one one proto earth or whatever they say so there was like you see one small another asteroid or maybe something it has hit our earth basically okay and then this uh, sunk inside or whatever here so due to this collision say some portion of the material you know it just uh, went into the space and then slowly you know this has uh, collided with one another bombarded or whatever and finally you have this uh, e, that is the moon actually all this material said became dense or whatever that is how this uh, moon has uh, you know been born actually this is what they call as giant uh, you know the impact that is a hypothesis theories are there so people have done astrophysics you know, some numerical uh, simulation they simulated this on a computer they showed the collision and then you know how this moon has uh, formed also so this is for our moon and of course we will be discussing about this moon in uh, great detail okay so this is for the jupiter's moon europa yesterday also i showed you the some of the images also so this was a recent uh, image so it shows lot of water actually so this is a bluish uh, color you can see so all these blue colors it indicate something like you know water or icy type of uh, you know the sites itself and these red lines you can see say so they find out from the you know electromagnetic spectrum or whatever so they are the sites where this liquid water is there okay so that is also you know uh, how these moons you know looks like europa i think some missions are being planned you know for this uh, moons also now this one i showed you yesterday enceladus okay so this is a cassini spacecraft found out and then they found out that lot of uh, you know the full of ice is there and this the ice jets you can see ice is coming into the space basically this geyser so okay so i think cassini measured or maybe you know so they found out this new things from our cassini space craft so so this is how about the moons basically now apart from the our solar system so once you cross this uh, neptune basically okay there are still there are lot of uh, solar system objects so that's what we call as you know, the cooper belt actually okay so this uh, it is basically a thick disk set and sometimes this is also known as a scattered disk also you know some names they use basically okay so this uh, you know this basically a thick disk actually rock bodies beyond the orbit of neptune so we will see lot of small small objects and then they are, that there also this voyager is a mission to say like you know aries uh, some uh, you know things have been found out you know oscillates and then pluto is there here uh, pluto of course has an atmosphere and then uh, you know the comets also you can find out in this uh, you know uh, this cooper belt so this is how it looks so this is a sun here and this orbit of neptune say once you cross neptune you know you will see a lot of uh, small 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 objects actually so some of them are like uh, comets some of them are you know so many uh, undiscovered uh, things are there there may be a planet or there may be you know whatever things are there but uh, people say that comets you know they originate in this uh, cooper belt also okay and lot of photographs also has happened so this is how the comets say they are located in this cooper belt or slightly far away from the cooper belt which is known as woods uh, cloud actually okay so i will show you photographs also so this is how the comets so asteroids sir what's the difference between asteroid and a comet hmm. any idea both are same or whether how they you know differ these two So previously I told you, asteroid means what type of material it is? Minerals. No, ah, no metals. Okay, be careful. Metals basically. Okay, so metals things will be in asteroids. But where do you see these comets? You will see far away in the solar system. That is once you have crossed Neptune. So now after Neptune and Uranus, just now we said right, they are all icy giants basically. So these comets, you know, there are a lot of ice will be there, okay, dust and then rock will be there, methane, ammonia and ice. So this is what they call as you see the comets basically, okay. And of course, all light is reflected from the sun, and then it nucleus will be very small. So this is how the comet looks like. It will be having a small uh, nucleus, coma. They say this portion, and then the hydrogen envelope will be there. And then how do you distinguish between a comet and an asteroid? Uh, comets will have some special feature. What is this uh, special feature? You can see here. You see how do they identify in the sky whether it is a comet or an asteroid? Now, what is this on the black side? Comet have a trailing oh. tail. Now, what is the tail consist of? See the tail will have what of 
uh, ice and then dust and other things itself okay so this is how a comet looks like this is a photographs actually people have done uh, taken a photograph of these comets and all these comets is uh, they are located in this uh, cooper belt or this oort uh, cloud that is in the far away of our uh, solar system okay so this is how the comet comes like basically these are like suppose this is a sun and this is our earth orbit say our earth is uh, orbit is here so the comets are located very very far away in the cooper belt or in the oort cloud after neptune actually so these comets will have these type of orbits basically so now uh, you know this is a comet say like this nucleus warms and begins to sublimate so as once it comes slowly to the sun what happens you know these comets the sun's temperature uh, you know once it comes close to the sun temperature increases and finally you know once it comes to this very close to the sun say so this tail forms basically okay so this tail will be pushed out by the solar wind actually so sun also you know the solar wind will be there so this pushes the tail and for all the comets say so this tail is towards the sun or the other side of the sun uh, this comet you see so this is a comet here uh, so now where is the tail is located uh, away from the sun away from the sun always it will be away from the sun because Of this solar wind actually, okay, because the solar wind is anyway that is the plasma or whatever you know, corona, corona or whatever that you know that layer is there. So the comet's tail will be you know towards this side of the uh, sun because of the solar wind. So it will be like this, and then this tail you can easily see when it comes to or uh, close to Earth. So you can see this type of a tail, you know, like a nucleus, a dust tail, say gas ion. So this forms. So that is how we differentiate between basically between a comet and an asteroid. Asteroids will not have any tails, okay, because they are all. metals is it so they will not have these issues but comets because they consist of ice and then dust and other kind of material you will see these type of uh, you know the comet orbits it's it and the same figure i am showing you here also it's just a sketch so you can see the tail of the comet say it is always uh, you know away from the sun so that you know that will be other side where in the when it is orbiting also this tail will be obviously on the other side actually because of the solar wind itself so this is how you know the comet looks like some uh, you know i think uh, nasa or some spacecraft say it has taken a photographs also so they contain lot of uh, you know variety the size and other things also okay and there are lot of geological formations also like small mountains or maybe basins and other things also you can see in this uh, comets and this is a comet i think 67p they have done uh, you can see lot of uh, you can identify here It's a lot of geological features, you know, some small faults or some small cracks and other things, you know, you can observe on these uh, comets also. So these are the so these are the Cooper Belt objects. So all these comets say they lie after Neptune in this uh, Cooper Belt uh, region. Now in this Cooper Belt region, say apart from these comets, you know, people have found out, uh, you know, there's Pluto also exists there. Then Charon, which is a moon of Pluto, then Sedna, Jupiter. So all of them are all, uh, you know, very largest. Uh, this is uh, you know uh, cooper belt uh, objects itself apart from comets so these are the structural features actually of a comet okay so the comet nucleus say something around 1 to 10 km it will be made up of dust ice and then rock and then the coma will be there okay i showed you right in the previous one up to 0.01 so you will have a coma it becomes and then hydrogen cloud will be there a dust tail and then you see this ion uh, tail will be there on this uh, comet itself and now these are the you know some more photographs about the you know the comets so comets are located here halley's comet you would have heard it basically some 70 years or something you know it comes once you know vega bear these are the comets and these are the largest known uh, you know the asteroids also okay now apart, apart from this cooper belt say cooper belt is very close to neptune actually as you go far away from the cooper belt so we will get this what we call as you know oort cloud actually okay so this contains billions of uh, comets itself you can see the scale here so this is our sun the you know inner planets are there and this is our uh, neptune uh, this itself and this is the orbit of pluto this black color and this is orbit of uh, you know the binary some cooper belt object the red color basically now this once you cross this cooper belt so you will see a huge uh, you know the thick that is what we they call as you know the oort cloud so this contains uh, you know billions of comets and then there may be many asteroids or maybe we have no idea you see the planets or whatever in that uh, region itself right now uh, voyager 1 voyager 2 only are going there okay so we may get some more information so missions are being uh, planned itself and what is the main uh, you know uh, what is the advantage of this oort cloud yeah. so if you want to know about the solar system say so now uh, what will be the advantage you know if you go to this oort cloud yeah. 
see the inner planets we have gas giants we have ice giants we have as you go far away from the solar system say the earth cloud this all this material will tell you what, what idea it gives you see what happened this earth cloud you are seeing so many billions of this type of uh, things right our solar uh, nearby our sun also these type of things used to be there but all of them they have hit one another and then these planets have formed actually okay but as you go far away say so this wood cloud material you know so these are all the material with something like you know when the solar system was formed say how the what type of material was there so all those details if you want to know say they are stored in this uh, wood cloud uh, particles so if mm -hmm. we can send spacecrafts and then if we can get some uh, information you see from this area you can find out the you know what are the materials you see which are there when the solar system was formed you know the long back okay so that is why you see people are uh, exploring say this uh, water cloud also so this one uh, so this is what we say so like you see you have this uh, 30000 ae 50000 ae say so jupiter's orbit once you cross this one you will see this uh, water cloud also okay lot of information or when the solar system was formed say billions of years back or whatever so all the material you know is contained in this uh, wood cloud also so if you can get information you can find out some mysteries you know how the solar system emerged or something like that you know so that information you can find out okay so this is a graph actually so you know this wood cloud is somewhere you know the located here and then they say that uh, you know this wood cloud say so this portion you know so as you go far away from the wood cloud now what happens yeah. so the effect of our uh, sun's influence region actually like now this question is also very important what is the dimensions of our solar system how much far you know our solar system are the solar how much distance the sun has influence basically so that uh, you know it comes into picture so this uh, wood cloud it is somewhere below you know it is something like a region you know where uh, the sun is influences comes down and then you know something interstellar medium comes into picture itself and right now i think it is uh, voyager 1 and voyager 2 so they have crossed our uh, heliosphere or you know this heliopause or whatever and they are almost i think they would have gone into earth cloud or maybe you know they would have gone into interstellar space okay so now these are now if you go far away from the earth clouds up to two light years four light years you know as already i told you right in inside the solar system what are the units we use the distance is measured in uh, what quantities inside the astronomical unit yeah you but once you cross uh, neptune and others you know uh, people use light years okay two light years four light years six light years so you will see this type of uh, you know proxima centauri why is you know all other kinds of uh, new new things comes into picture okay and now uh, so this is about our solar system so solar system means you know we have sun the planets then we have this cooper belt then uh, once you cross cooper belt you will have the oort cloud and that's it actually okay now here people also have tried to find out you know what are the dimensions of our solar system with how much distance you know the sun will have influence basically so now this is solar wind say so they say that sun also you know the solar wind it is like a some kind of a charged particles so people have uh, estimated them and then you know so that information is also they have found out so the region say where the distance have up to how much the sun will have an influence basically so this portion you know they call this as a heliosphere okay so this heliosphere uh, you know the, this is basically the solar wind that is the effect of the sun how much distance so this they call as you know the heliosphere itself and then you know so these are the solar wind parameters basically people have measured like you know when you go outside of earth say we say it is all vacuum you know there is no vacuum so outside our whole planet say it is you will have the solar wind uh, you know the particles which are like a charged particles which are coming from the sun itself and uh, there has been instruments have been gone and nasa you know they have measured also the what is the particle density of the solar wind parameters the velocity of this solar wind say, which is coming from the sun temperatures particle thermal energy so all those things have been uh, measured so there is nothing like a vacuum you know so outside our earth say our once you cross our atmosphere you will be having this type of solar wind actually and they have found out how much distance the solar wind you can see from the sun so this is what they call as you know the heliosphere and then finally because the interstellar space will be there this heliosphere say it takes this a tear drop shape actually you can see this a beautiful shape this is what they call as you know so this region say they call this as you know the heliosphere kind of thing so you can see so now once you cross this helios so here in this entire region say so what is what is happening to the solar wind so you can see here 
so from the sun this solar wind comes so inside this uh, tear drop shapes uh, so the solar wind is going only you know it is going only in one uh, they are not getting divergence or something like that once they cross this uh, termination shock uh, so this is a boundary so after once it crosses the termination shock uh, what is happening to the solar wind now so what is happening to the solar wind at this boundary so in this region uh, wind is always going at in a progressive uh, direction it is expanding kind of thing once it comes to this uh, termination shock said what is happening to the solar wind no it is getting diverted diverted getting diverted so this ray the region okay up to uh, the distance up to which solar wind doesn't diverge we call this as a heliosphere and the shape is you know a tear drop shape kind of thing okay so now once it crosses this termination shock you know because of interstellar uh, wind or whatever this one so things gets you know diverged or whatever this comes and then finally so the heliopause you can see here this is another boundary they say the heliopause this is a region basically okay so in this heliopause once you cross this heliopause region say and now what is there now once you cross this heliopause Uh, whether you will see any solar wind there? There will be interstellar electrons. So you will have interstellar space itself. Okay. So that is how, and then interstellar bow shock is there. You know where this uh, interstellar space also you will have. And after once you cross this one set, then you will be under the control of uh, you know interstellar uh, wind or whatever. Yes. Yeah. So this regions heliosphere or whatever. So this is something like. trying to find out the influence region of uh, sun so with this you know our solar system uh, ends actually so your sun say the so sun will have complete uh, effect in this uh, small tear drop kind of a shape which we call as a heliosphere okay so that is how you know these things comes into picture and now where is our voyager 1 uh, voyager 1 voyager 2 say they have already crossed mm -hmm. I think helio pass the termination shock already they have crossed I think in 2012 now they have gone into the interstellar space itself so this is the boundary of our solar system okay so that's what they say so all planetary orbits say they lie within the heliosphere so this was a diagram I showed you so the solar wind say solar wind is nothing but something like a plasma ionized gas you know which is traveling outward from the sun at supersonic speeds which has been measured also okay so now the solar wind say in the way merges with the interstellar medium at the heliopause so heliopause is this region basically okay so this region say it merges with this uh, heliopause so that is a region here the boundary of the heliosphere the composition of the heliosphere is dominated by solar wind protons and electrons actually like if you go to space and measure you know it is complete dominated by our uh, solar wind only. protons and electrons these are density okay 5 into 10 to the power of 6 protons you know you can get this uh, different uh, these uh, you know the numbers also and these particles uh, solar wind also moves at 400 km per second actually near the solar equator and when you come to solar poles it is 700 to 800 these uh, things have been measured also and uh, low interstellar medium set so this is a density many hydrogen and helium atoms they have found out and then the sun's motion is relative to the neighboring star so sun is moving at a speed of 26 kilometers per second actually so the whole sun moving the whole the solar system itself is moving at a velocity of this one and of course heliosphere also you know because the region of influence of the sun say that also moves at the same uh, speed here itself and then the so heliosphere you know is start to be like a tear drop that's what we said right so this is a shape of our uh, you know the heliosphere of our uh, sun actually and of course there will be a tail because interstellar medium is going one only one direction so you will have this downward uh, you know the direction itself and of course interstellar the ions and electrons is outside the heliosphere uh, they will be flowing and but they cannot enter our no so this interstellar medium the particles from that region say they cannot enter our heliosphere because of our uh, sun okay so sun is protecting us from this uh, interstellar this itself and of course neutrals can enter inside okay which plus negative you would have seen they can enter but not uh, uh, you know that's what how it says and of course just interior to the heliopause you know the solar wind slows down that's what we said okay so once it crosses the solar wind speed here it will be full speed but once it crosses this region there is a termination shock you know the wind velocity also decreases and then it uh, diverges uh, back itself and of course the voyager 1 i think was oh, sorry in 2004 itself you know it has uh, crossed this okay and voyager 2 also i think multiple times it crossed uh, in 2007 itself and uh, you know i think they say voyager 2 i think 2018 itself termination shock i think they would have gone into the interstellar medium itself 
so this is one animation you know artistic view of how it looks like so this is a termination shot this is a heliopause this is a heliosphere like a teardrop uh, shape itself and our sun is moving you know in this direction and voyager 1 voyager 2 say they have crossed this uh, heliosphere itself <coughs> so this is how our uh, solar system you know the inventory basically okay so what is the boundary of the solar system mm. so now suppose somebody if you ask to say like when you are in a school if somebody asks you solar system means we used to give the definition as sun plus uh, you know nine planets or eight planets we used to say now what's the definition of solar system now mm. everything within the heliopause no everything that is the definition of solar system it is not just eight planets plus this you know that definition is now thrown out actually okay and now this is uh, you know so this is what the so, so now uh, to summarize i have given you all the inventory so what we have discussed is we have not come to the numbers and other great details i have given you inventory what type of things exist in our uh, solar system okay now before we go into the more details say so now you also should know how a solar system uh, gets formed basically okay so this is how it happens you would have studied in uh, you know in textbooks also so there is something like you know these uh, clouds will be there molecular clouds in our galaxy or whatever so what happens is because of all these bombardments and gravity collapses all kinds of in uh, these things so finally you know things go like this actually okay things starts rotating rotating kind of thing and all the you know the energy the heat or other things is there they will get here and slowly the particles which are rotating around this uh, you know this molecular cloud or whatever the star forms so they all collide with each other and they will have a nice uh, path they make out actually and all these uh, small 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 particles they collide with each other and then automatically these type of planets gets uh, formed up, okay so like this earth moon all have been formed like this and this is a very you can see this figure shows you a, you know a proto planetary disk they say so somewhere far away from our uh, you know our solar system so new solar system is getting born you know uh, slightly far away from our uh, sun's uh, this itself i think hubble telescope or you know they have taken this uh, images also so these are how a solar system looks like just from a cloud then it comes like this like this like this and they all the particles they collide each other and beautifully these the planets gets uh, formed itself and then this is a cosmogeny of our solar system so when these collisions happen say uh, now what happens very close what type of planets gets formed because the center of the thing will be extremely hot uh, now what happens which will get condensed in the circle in the very close to our sun now what happens nearby the solar system say in the near region what type of mineral what type of materials will be there this red color you can see here metals all metals silicates iron these are all very heavy metals okay so they all will get solidified basically okay so they all will get very closely and as you go far away say so then you will have the gases ices and gases cannot they cannot condense actually very in the close to the sun so all these things escape actually as you go slightly far away say so all these gases you know they get trapped by this jupiter or these huge planets and as you go far away say because the temperature is also very very you know low so these icy particles and then you know that icy giants and other things comes into picture and then as you go far away from the solar systems so all the materials you know they cannot uh, Uh, the join and then become a planet so they all become like that oort cloud or you know that cooper belt say small 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 particles will be uh, rotating like that. this is how a solar the cosmogeny basically so whenever there is any solar system say nearby our sun all metals you know very heavy dense kind of a thing which can condense at the temperatures they will be formed rocky planets or something as you go far away gaseous planets as you go far away icy kind of a things and then rocks you know they form uh, far away from the solar system so this is how the solar generally any solar system say it looks uh, something like this okay so this is how a planet gets formed so first what happens these are the one is all small 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 uh, you know asteroids or comets or whatever you know these small particles will be there so then uh, what happens is all these things uh, starts colliding with each other because their orbits are all same so slowly they start colliding say so then uh, you know it grows basically the material they stitch to each other and then you know the interior thing gets heated up also because of the you know the temperature also and then you know one after another one after another they heat each other and slowly you see the planet gets uh, formed and because of heat uh, so much heat at the center 
and here you know slowly you see the uh, crust mantle and all other geological features you know they form and then the planet gets uh, you know a bar actually in the solar system so that's what it says okay so the uh, so the whole uh, solar system uh, the starting point is a molecular clouds basically okay so these are the coldest and the densest particles of the interstellar medium you can see here okay so the molecular clouds say so this is a starting uh, point for to the, for the you know birth of a solar system so this is the coldest and the densest part you know they join and then you know they form this uh, cores and then slowly you know all these things uh, comes into picture yeah so this is how it happens you know all the my and then uh, you know which were uh, so so that's what i told you so the meteorites minor planets and comets is say so what's the main advantage no yeah. so these minor planets and comets you know whatever i showed you cooper belt and others is say uh, so now what happens these are all basically no. what are these materials no. you can read this statement no. what is advantage of them no. so these are all the initial uh, things actually okay so that is initial means these materials no. so the uh, particles you know, which was born say the starting point of the denser cloud or molecular cloud or whatever the materials are there so all the nearby materials they collide with one another planet gets formed okay and then the and then the whatever material metals are that's heavy metals they get sink inside the uh, you know the planet itself and it is very difficult to observe them you know to be able to drill and then you have to understand but what happens is a far away materials is say so the far away things what happens they cannot collide with each other and they will be lying like that only okay so what's the main advantage of all these uh, things yeah. so what's the greatest advantage yeah. so the advantage so the meteorites or minor planets or whatever you can see here say comets and others you know they were never incorporated into the bodies of planetary events so they will have they will preserve yeah. preserve the data about solar system Uh, that means initial term so if you want to know our solar system age of the solar system say uh, what is if you know age of earth can you find out age of solar system say suppose age of earth i know uh, from our uh, age of earth can you find out age of the solar system uh, or age of mars also hmm. Yeah, because what happens? All the oldest particles they all got uh, you know uh, what is bombarded and then this planet has formed. So if you want to find out the age of the solar system, say which things you have to look for? Hmm. Yeah, you should get information from. Hmm. Now where you should get sample from? from? meteorites and comets no yeah, comets which are far away so these are basically the parent material you know through which these uh, planets have been formed okay so that is why these meteorites in fact they are also very very important actually okay so that is how these uh, you know so all so in the solar system say it is not only planets everything is important if we can catch a comet say and then you can do carbon dating and you can find out uh, all those details it may tell us you know how this when the solar system was formed all other mysteries so you can get from this uh, data itself okay so this is a very important uh, thing yeah. so anyway that's what uh, you know we said so whenever a solar system so the initial planets all heavy metals heavy things gets solidified very close to the uh, sun and as you go far away gases and you know other comes comes and then the materials which cannot form into a planet say they will be located somewhere outside our uh, solar and they will be having unstable orbits and you know so many things will be there <coughs> so this is how you know the solar system gets uh, formed and uh, you know that's how you know the things get okay so i will stop here if you have any questions you can ask me so from the next class say we will go more into numbers okay so we will uh, i have shown you the inventory of the solar system almost we have covered in these two classes so we will go and then try to find out the mathematical things and then you know uh, very interesting uh, you know formulas and then you know interesting mathematical things is so we will discuss from our uh, next class okay right. so if you have any questions you can ask sir the icy particles that are there no. is that ice water or some other compound the water is there